On this episode of We Come From The Future, we booze it up like the science fiction geeks we are. We've brought on 2012's Bartender of the Year, Russell Davis, and he's here to teach us about the science of mixology. And Esther will explain the science behind getting drunk. And we'll talk about the fictional bars we'd hang out in and fictional drinks we'd send down the hatch. Join us for Alktoberfest on We Come From The Future. This episode of We Come From The Future is sponsored by the National Campaign Against Drunk Driving. Welcome to We Come From The Future, the show where we make a toast to the future and send it off on its drunken honeymoon. I'm Annalee Newitz. And I'm Esther Inglis Arkell. One thing we can always count on is people coming up with new forms of intoxication. If you're sick of always getting drunk like it's the present, and you'd rather pretend to be toasting the opening of the colony we build on Mars, we're going to show you how to drink in the future. But first, we're going to tell you which drinks we'd prefer to be toasting with. Science fiction offers up a lot of future drinking possibilities, and I think my favorite is Synthahol from Star Trek, because it has this amazing property where you can drink it and get drunk, but then the instant that like the captain pings you on your communicator, you can be totally sober. Like, I one day am hoping that someone actually writes a scientific paper about how that would work. Like, how would you have alcohol that you could just, with a thought, wish away your drunkenness? You know, that's convenient, but convenience isn't everything. So I think I'm going to go with the Pan Galactic Gargle Blaster. Now that's from The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And its descri the description that it's given is um, having your brains smashed out by a slice of lemon wrapped around a large gold brick. I like that. Gold brick. That's classy. With lemon. With lemon. Exactly. Classy too. You can't have one of those yet, but today's special guest is going to show you how to make your own science fictional drink. Join us for a very fiery adventure in mixology. Joining us now is Russell Davis, who is the 2012 Bartender of the Year. And he's the brainiac behind one of our favorite new places in San Francisco, the Ice Cream Bar, which serves antique drinks. So Russell's here to teach us about mixology, the chemistry of mixology, and he's going to do a couple drinks for us, one of which is science fiction themed. So Russell, can you tell us a little bit more about this first drink that we're going to do? Yeah, uh, you bet. Um, this first one is one I call the uh, the big red button, um, and I'm actually going to start mixing it as I'm kind of talking to yeah, you about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, please do. This is a, uh, I wanted to create the first cocktail meant to be, uh, to go into space, um, and also your first response in an intergalactic emergency. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wanted to do a little take on an old school drink called the Sazerac, which is actually the first American cocktail. Um, and I'm mixing it with a uh, with cognac, which is what it was originally made with. So we're going to combine uh, cognac, uh, pecho bitters, a little bit of uh, absinthe as well, and then and some right sugar. And uh, this is just your basic uh, recipe for a cocktail. Um, invented in 1836 in New Orleans, it is sugar, spirit, bitters. And uh, the last ingredient is water. Now, if the, co if the cocktail is actually being mixed in a bar, um, you're generally going to have the water would be added whenever it's stirred with the ice, and the dilution of the cocktail brings it uh, to this amount. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm actually adding just room temperature uh, ice, I mean room temperature water, and making the cocktail and stirring it and mixing it at room temperature. Um, so what I've done is I've actually dug in molds into dry ice using the uh, bottom of a shaker tin. Um, I want to do this, this without actually having to use any tools that a bartender would normally have in his, his mixing bag. And I'm going to pour them into these molds. And this is just how it would work in space. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the, the way that I would look at it is that this would actually be maybe a cocktail that was prepared, could be prepared in space, but prepared somewhere, and yet was just transported to space, because once it comes out, it's actually going to be in the shape of a nice little cookie. <laughs> now, the, uh, the thing about this also is that once, you, once we actually pull these out of the mold, the cocktail will be really, really cold. The little cocktail cookie will be cold. Um, this dry ice is at 109.3, a negative 109.3 degrees Fahrenheit. So you actually want to let it sit out for a couple minutes before you actually eat it, because it will um, give you a little bit of frostbite on your tongue. I really got inspired by um, and this whole cocktail and just the idea of it would be a lot of the Douglas Adam books. Mm -hmm. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy was one of my favorite books kind of growing up and 
and uh, this is just a, an inspired by him because I think that this is something he probably had on one of his spaceships. This is the don't panic button for sure. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Yeah. That is nice. Very nice. Douglas Adams would be proud. Yeah, I pulled up that in a little bit, but it does look pretty good. Don't panic. Do you want to? And the way that I would want to serve this, so I feel like it's a weird spit on a, on a drink. We're going to turn that martini glass upside down. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Then do you, do I bite into it yeah, or I, just in, like way, break it yeah, apart? Any way you want to get it. I mean, your your ship's your ship's going out of control. Oh no! Yeah, you might die. You don't really know. We have to like. Oh, it's all oh, help! Help! How do you get it? <laughs> it's the Romulans this time. Oh, I hate the Romulans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Cold. Okay, so Russell's gonna do another drink for us. This one is going to be a fire-related drink, which in, in tradition of the show, we have to have some fire. So tell us about what this drink is gonna be. So uh, this is gonna be an old school uh, drop shot style drink, um, but it's a little twist on a, uh, what I consider to be a little Western classic called a boiler maker. Um, so what we're going to do here is I'm actually going to fill up uh, these glasses with Anchor Steam beer, which is a great uh, local beer coming out of San Francisco. You had to put a little bit of uh, bourbon in our uh, shot glasses. I'm going with bourbon this time around, American uh, whiskey. And then I am going to put those on top and then drop them in as I light them on fire with a, uh, a high proof spirit. This time around it's going to be a 151 proof rum. You know, you can use a neutral grain spirit uh, as long as it doesn't get over 170 proof. All ready? Yeah. Okay. We are ready. Okay. okay. Are you ready? All right. Pizza. That okay. was excellent. Wow, we've had ice, we've had fire. Um, this is this is great. Thank you for for bringing us into the chemistry of booze. <laughs> yes. All right. Oh, and it's warm. Cheers to warm beer. All right. Thank you. Mixing up crazy cocktail concoctions can be lots of fun, but what definitely isn't fun is drunk driving. Putting yourself and others in danger when you drink and drive is not only irresponsible; it's just plain stupid. On August 15 to September 3rd, police nationwide will be out in force to crack down on drunk driving, drive sober or get pulled over. Here's some sobering data on the impact of drunk driving. In 2010, more than 10,000 people died in crashes where a driver or motorcycle rider was under the influence of alcohol. That's 10,000 needless deaths that could have been prevented if alcohol was not involved. Remember, state and local law enforcement across the nation will be taking part and they will be looking for drunk drivers day and night and making the roads safer for the rest of us. So do yourself a favor and keep me and my friends safe. Drive sober or get pulled over. If you're gonna make a giant flaming drink, don't drive. So I'm back with a slightly tipsy Esther. I thought it would be fun to leave the science explanations until after she had a couple drinks. So while we talk about how alcohol works, we can also see its effects. We say that we drink alcohol, but what are we actually drinking? We are actually drinking ethanol, which mm. is uh, two carbon atoms, mm -hmm. six hydrogen atoms, and an oxygen atom, just one. Just one. Just one. And it works because this chemical combination interacts with neurotransmitters, especially receptors on neurons or nerve cells in your brain. Basically, messages don't get sent as reliably between the neurons, and your brain doesn't really work as well. And that's why you get sort of wobbly and uncoordinated. At the same time, that blockage between neurons also is stopping chemicals that are normally associated with making you feel anxious or preventing you from doing silly things. So this makes you feel really good. You take more risks, you feel confident and bolder, and maybe you say some things you probably shouldn't have said. Yep, yeah, it feels good because it's temporary brain damage. Lovely, lovely brain damage. Now, while I sober up, you can watch previous episodes on iTunes. Just search for I09. And you can subscribe to us on YouTube by clicking here, or you can find us right here on Revision 3. I'm Esther Inglis Arkell. 
And I'm Annalie Newitz, and we'll see you next week when Esther has sobered up in the future.